Hello everyone, this is Jar the Orange, and today I'm going to be going over the games I'm excited for that are coming out in 2019. And to all my subs, the reason I have not been uploading videos is because most games that have came out since Total War Arena died have just been shit. <laughs> Honestly, I've played a lot of games and I have not found any of them enjoyable, so hopefully the games on this list do end up being reasonably good. That's all I'm hoping for at this stage. Something that's at least slightly fucking interesting. So let's start off with the first game and that is Conqueror's Blade. And one thing I want to say off the bat, I have watched a lot of videos on Conqueror's Blade and the combat system has looked dog shit. But I think the main reason for that is because they are mostly low level players as in the character is a low level and they don't control their units. So many times they just run off without their units. It's like, isn't the whole fucking point of this game is that you control the units and then they help you in combat? So I'm going to have to test it out myself. I've got a few ideas I think will work in this game and make the combat a lot more interesting than watching motherfuckers run around randomly. Now for the good news. Now for the reasons why I am interested in this game. Everything else looks so damn good. You get to level your character up, you get to dual class once you get to those higher levels, which makes the combat a lot more interesting. You can bring three units with you into combat, one at a time, but you can switch them out. And you can level them up as well. I always like to be able to progress in a game at some level, even if it is just unlocking a cosmetic or something. Not only that, their clan system or guild system or whatever the fuck you want to call it looks like the best thing I've ever bloody seen. You get to attack other people's forts and castles, take over their shit. It has this mountain blade-like map, so you can roam around, g gather resources, fight off bandits, attack players, attack their forts. It just looks like a bloody good time. If the combat system was a bit better, this would be my perfect game. Not only that, it's coming out soon, apparently. Well, the next test is coming out soon. And I want to be part of that test, so uh, hopefully I can get in and try this game out firsthand. So basically, the only problem I have with, with this game is I watched a lot of paid sponsored videos where they just ran around, had no idea what they were doing. It was like it was their first time ever playing a bloody strategy game. They just... It confused the shit out of me, and I'll, I had to wonder, is the, is the combat system shit? Or are they just bad at it? So this is one of the games, it's going to be free to play, I want to get my hands on it to see if it is any good. I've heard great things about it, and bad things about it. Mostly the combat system, that thing. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully. So my excitement level for this game, especially since it is coming out soon, is probably an 8. I'm going to give it an 8. I probably will like it. How long I will like it, on the other hand, is a different matter. Now let's move on to the next game. This game is called Iron Harvest, and it, from the sounds of it, it does sound great. It just sounds like what I've been looking for. But like my father always says, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. From the looks of it, the combat system is very similar to Company of Heroes. I just hope it's Company of Heroes 1 and not Company of Heroes 2. One thing I am loving about it is they said they will support multiplayer combat. It will be competitive and balanced. And that is so damn rare in strategy games these days. It pretty much doesn't exist outside of StarCraft 2 and another game I'll mention further down the track. Not only that, there will be heroes in the game, like this guy with the big fucking beard and the curly moustache. I'm probably going to beat him. And I've always loved the hero system inside of a strategy game. For example, uh, Battlecry, Warcraft 3, Dawn of War 2. Love those games. I love the fact that you have a powerful unit that leads the way. So this game, it sounds great, but I haven't seen too much of it yet. And I don't know when it's going to be, be released, so 
My excitement level is a uh, 7. Let's say 7. Now let's move on to the next game. Of course, that is Warcraft 3 Reforged. I love Warcraft 3. I still remember the builds. I played it for years. I played it so damn much. The builds in the game are imprinted into my brain. It has everything I like. Multiplayer support, a hero system, a great single player campaign. Not only that, the custom maps just made this game. This game created moments. That's how fucking good this, one, this game is. If you've played League of Legends or Dota, you have Warcraft 3 to thank for that shit. And all the races were viable. I used to pick random just to fuck with my enemies, make them confused, and I could play all of them reasonably well, about the same level. One thing though is, I was horrible at micromanagement, so what I used to do is the cheapest shit ever. Tower rushing, rushing, I just rushed everyone, all the fucking time. <laughs> I used to have this undead build where I would have 12 ghouls pretty much at the start of the bloody game, and not only that, when one died, I could summon two skeletons, it was, it was just a spam build. Because I was pretty crap at strategy games, it was my first strategy game. And I just cheesed the shit out of it. <laughs> when they released that new hero that could spam five beetles out of dead corpses, I was set. <laughs> a lot of the reason I probably like this game is because of the nostalgia. It was my first proper game. This is it. This was my jam. I could not get enough of this. So my excitement level is 8, because it probably will be a while until it comes out. If it was coming out tomorrow, it would be 10. I would be so damn excited. Now let's talk about a game that might be coming out in 2019. Probably not. Probably not. I'm not getting my hopes up. I've been saying that for years. It's coming out this year. Oh, it's coming out this year. Oh, it's coming out this year. And now I just think it's not coming out. It's just not, uh, I'll be dead by the time this comes out, and so, so will you. If you're one, if you're one years old right now, by the time this game comes out, you'll be probably 80. You'll be the only people able to play this game. Everyone else will be dead. So for all you one year olds, you have something to look forward to. The rest of us are going to be in the grave going, oh, it's coming out this year. But let's start off what made the first game great. So you start off by yourself in a little town somewhere, so slowly build up an army, maybe take on some bandits, or become a bandit yourself, build up your money, gear up your character, level up. Eventually, you're trying to become king or a duke or something, and you just got this giant army as you can see on your screen. And then you get arrested, all your dudes die, and you have to start all over again. There's also sieges, diplomacy, everything is in this game. And as you can tell, I'm not a very good salesman. I love this game, but I can't explain it very well. It's, it's a fucking great game. Just go buy it. And what makes it so bloody great is the mods. And they're not half ass mods where it's like, oh, look, now you got a pony. Oh, I shrunk the horse model down, and now you can ride around on a pony. Even though that mod does exist, there are mods like that. There are also ones that completely transform the game. There's a Warhammer one. Uh, my favorite is Prophecy of Pandora, where you have these night charters and you can join up with one or you can just kill them all. It, it's just bloody good fun. So if you do buy this, download Prophecy of Pandora. I haven't played for a while, I might be pronouncing it wrong. And it's it just makes it so much better. The graphics are dated, but you will get over that. There's so much you can do in the game, you'll forget about that shit, unless you're a whingy bitch. Are you a whingy bitch if you're not? Buy this game. <laughs> and I know I'm being hypocritical, I whinge about games all the time. I hate this indus industry and I love it at the same time. I can't stop complaining, but I still play the shit. Did I mention Mountain Blade has really good uh, horse combat and sieges? I just thought I should end on a good note. It does have those things, that's a plus. And my excitement level for this game, I'm going to give it a 7. Mostly, mostly because I'll probably have arthritis by the time the game comes out and I won't be able to play it properly. That's the only reason. If it wasn't for that, it would be another 10. It would be another bloody 10. 
The next game on the list comes from a company called Ubisoft and it is Skull and Bones. Now for some reason I always get Bioware mixed up with Ubisoft. So when Ubisoft releases a game I go oh that's that company that makes shit games. <laughs> but in all honesty I enjoy all their games. Far Cry is pretty cool. Uh, Tom Clancy games, apart from The Division I heard mixed reviews, I didn't try it. I might actually enjoy it, I just never tried it. Assassin's Creed is a big one, especially Black Flags. And that brings me to why I'm interested in this game. The combat looks very similar to Black Flags, apart from the fact that it has a bit of World of Warships going on. I also enjoyed that game for the slight period I did play it. And I do believe this is their second venture into multiplayer games, and I heard some great things. My brother loved the shit out of uh, Rainbow Six Siege. I didn't buy it because I thought, oh, it's a, you know Ubisoft. It's the same dudes that made Mass Effect. <laughs> Literally, I always get Bioware mixed up and go, no, I'm not buying that shit. But I have heard good things about Rainbow Six Siege. So, you know... They could make a good multiplayer game. I will say this though, if you did not enjoy Black Flag, or as I like to call it, Black Flags, and if you did not enjoy World of Warships in the slightest, you're probably not going to enjoy this game. I'm presuming it has combat similar to Black Flag, but it has a leveling system similar to World of Warships. So that's what you're getting. It seems pretty obvious, I could be completely fucking wrong, but that's what it looks like. Overall, my excitement level is a 3, because somehow they managed to screw up one of the best games ever, and that was Dragon Age. I'm not sure how they went so damn wrong with that game. So my faith in them is pretty small. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for that, I'd probably be on a 7. I'm going to say a 7. And that's basically the end of the list. You can tune out now, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Basically, you could have tuned out a long time ago. These other games are ones that I am half interested in. One of them has already been released, the other one will be released soon. The first game is Sea of Thieves. It has been out for a while. If you haven't figured it out yet, I do like my pirate games. The issue I have with this game, it doesn't seem like there is that much to do. But I'm looking for a game to fill out a bit of time, something in between waiting for new releases, and you know, you can, you can be a pirate. <laughs> also to the Total War Arena players, what have you guys been playing while waiting for something good to come out? I can't find anything man. Anything. I keep buying games and going, well that is horrible. I need my multiplayer and either a tactic game or a strategy game and when I say multiplayer, I'm not talking just 1v1. I need multiple options when it comes to multiplayer. I get bored when it's only 1v1. Also, I do like a bit of progression and that leads to this game. It has a bit of the things I love. It also has one of the things I hate the most. So, and Ubisoft once again the dickheads who fucked up Dragon Age. <laughs> but back to what I was saying in the first place, I like to have some progression going on, some new stuff to unlock. I like there to be end game though, like, uh, like at some point you reach that pinnacle where everything is even. A bit of a grind, but not too much of a grind. I also like Games are based in the past, not so much the future. And it needs to have multiplayer support. It needs to have at least 2v2 ranked. 1v1's okay. That's okay, well, there's fuck all of those games. So, you know, that's, that's a dream at this stage. Pretty much what I'm saying is, I want Total War Arena, but with a ranked system. Or Conqueror's Blade with a better combat system. If you had Total War Arena and Conqueror's Blade just screw like rabbits and they bursted out a child, that would be my game. But let's move on from there and let's talk about Division 2. I know I already did, took a big shit on Division 1. And that's because of Bullet Sponge. I don't enjoy that aspect of a shooter game. 
If I shoot someone in the head, they're dead. At least that's how I've uh, found it in real life. Not only joking, I've never shot anyone. I live in Australia, mate. If we're going to shoot someone, it's with a knife. <laughs> but that is one aspect of the game I'm not looking forward to. The rest sounds pretty cool. I like the way that they balance PvP, as in, if you're a low, lower level and they're a higher level, the system tries to balance it so you can actually kill them. And then they have another area where it's all about your gear. It's a, a mix of both, and I think that's a pretty cool idea. Anyway guys, leave your opinion below, tell me what games I should play, I, I need something to fill out some time until the games I'm looking forward to come out. And until then, enjoy your gaming. <laughs>